Day 29. IDF combat engineering forces and tanks, led by the Gaza Division, carried out a targeted raid in the southern Gaza Strip overnight to map out buildings and to clear the area of planted explosive devices. During the operation, troops encountered and killed a Hamas cell that came out of a tunnel. Hamas launched an Ayash-250 rocket with a range of 250 kilometers at Eilat. After interception by the Arrow Air Defense System, a trail of smoke was visible. It marks the second interception by the long-range Arrow Air Defense System since the beginning of the war. A ballistic missile launched from Yemen at Eilat was downed last week. Today, rockets were fired from Gaza towards Ashkelon and Ashdod, as well as a number of surrounding communities. The IDF carried out airstrikes in southern Lebanon today in response to rocket fire on northern Israel. They struck two Hezbollah cells planning to open fire at Israel with anti-tank guided missiles. They also struck an observation post belonging to Hezbollah. Earlier, rockets were fired from Lebanon at the Roshanikra area without causing injuries or damage. They also fired towards the upper Galilee towns of Dishon and Malkia, close to the Lebanese border. Families of the more than 240 hostages held in Gaza have begun to sleep outside the military headquarters in Tel Aviv. They are demanding that Israel refuse any ceasefire that doesn't include the release of their loved ones. Merav Leshem Gore, whose daughter, Romy, is a hostage, said we won't go home until they return home. Many Israelis joined the families to protest tonight. Gal Hirsch, who has been appointed by Prime Minister Netanyahu as liaison between families of the hostages and the government, was booed by families when he came to meet them today. They shouted at him, you are an embarrassment, go home. The Foreign Ministry and the National Security Council warned today that Israelis should weigh the essentiality of their travel plans before departing the country and take additional precautions while away. They warned against anti-Semitic protests and attacks on Israeli embassies, airports that take in flights from Israel and Jewish communities and religious institutions abroad. Members of Kibbutz Be'eri, one of the worst devastated communities in the October 7th Hamas onslaught, thought they had lost their businesses when they were forced to evacuate. A post on social media brought some joy today. Be'eri had a thriving nursery for household plants, a little blossoming paradise that made everyone happy. When we were forced to evacuate it, it was clear that all the plants would dry up. Rain does not get inside and the watering was done manually. After two days without water, the plants start to wither. Now we found a small miracle in Beary. When residents were allowed back this week, they found a sign on the nursery. Sorry, we broke into the nursery. We had to water the plants. With love, the soldiers. This is Peter Jones-Pellach reporting for NCJWA Australia.